Martin Bayfield, replaced in the second row by Mosley's Steve Lloyd. And with Steve Hackney also injured, Frank Packman switched to the wing and Ian Bates came in at centre. Changes to in the southwest side with Jonathan Callard replacing John Webb, who was unavailable at full back. And in the pack, Darren Crompton, who came on as a replacement for John Mallett in the game against London, continued at tight head prop. Commentator is Nigel Starmer Smith. England's most experienced international referee, who has though just been dropped from the international panel, sets the game in motion here at Welford Road. And it's the Midlands, the home side against the red and green of the southwest. Beale's kick doesn't go into touch. Quickly on the attack, Steve Lloyd. Good work by Richards, but there'd been a knock on. And it went forward in the tackle. Scrummage down. Lively Midlands start. Richard Hill, his old partner. Stuart Barnes waits. More secure that time. Hill. Barnes now. Trying to float it down the line and does so well. Typically efficient start by the Bath and Southwest halfbacks. Lloyd and Blackmore in the middle. Lloyd it was. But the front man Johnson was uh, going across the line. Despite the good catch of Steve Lloyd, then it's a penalty again to the southwest. Stuart Barnes for touch down the line. Midlands 22, knocked down by Clark, but Johnson's through, down by Oliver. I expect a robust game from uh, Neil back today. There he is, number seven. No doubt miffed, as are many of his supporters here at Welford Road, that he's been excluded on grounds of height from the England squad. Blues took it in, though, and don't win it back. Southwest get the put in. Gets ahead, and off goes Dawson. Tornicott put in touch as he got round Beale. And again, the meeting of two young pretenders, Harvey Thornicott, left wing for the Midlands there, and Nigel Beale, the new whiz kid on the southwest right. It was uh, Dawson's initial break, nicely set up. Thornicott, though, had a foot in touch, and Nick Beale was uh, fortunate for that. Halfway line. Down to Hill. Barnes. This move in the centre to Guscott. Bouncing kindly for Lyley. Well cleared. Oliver's throw still camped down on the southwest 22. Southwest have stolen that one. Hill again. Barnes making room and again back. Ever present. Misjudged by Lyley. Good support from Pacman though. Almost interception. In fact, it is to Glanville. Looking for the counter attack, but they paid dearly. Advantage being played here. Guscott rather lazily across, but it's quite effective. Keeps the pressure on. Again, willing to counter-attack, but as they do so, referee Howard calls them all back with the Midlands caught offside in the middle of the field. So with no Jonathan Webb, Barnes, with all the kicking duties one suspects, no mistake, and against the run of play, it's the Southwest who take the lead after just about 14 minutes of the first half. Clark at the back. Chris Clark, his namesake on the peel. It's the young uh, Swansea prop forward. Who's making waves in selection. This is Clark, the senior, or the bigger man. Hill to Barnes. 
Swift transference, full-back Pallard in the corner. Good try. Delight for the downside schoolmaster, Jonathan Callard. Certainly making the most of uh, his return to divisional honours. Nicely, swiftly passed, and, and Barnes did well to get the tackle away, the pass away in the tackle, and set up Callard for a clear run-in. You can see here, Hill's tackled well, but look at how effective this round-the-man pass was. That created the opening. And it stays 8-0, 21 and a half minutes gone in the first half. So we're 30 metres out, Midlands feet to the scrum, back stands off. Richards channels it for Dawson. Richards now, Dawson. Distribution leaving a bit to be desired, and it's the South West who break away fast through to Glanville, over the halfway to Hill. Clark. Hill again, Barnes, and again setting it up well on the short side, this is Kevin Dunn, Hill, Barnes, good take, Clark at speed, and as the ball comes out, already the whistle has blown, and it's a further penalty to the southwest. And the... Midlands were guilty of uh, just virtually piling in on top of the player in possession. Penalty chance for the Southwest and the captain Stuart Barnes. That's three he's missed. So Midlands still very much in touch. Quarter of an hour of this half to go. Redmond. Yeah. For Beale to chase. And the pack. Thornycroft covers. Knocks it down to uh, Dawson. That'll be a penalty against Hill for going a bit high round uh, young Dawson. Well... I don't think it was that serious, personally. He ducks down, and that always lays you open to risk. And, and, and Hill's hand definitely slipped off the ball. A bit of song and dance about nothing. Just inside the southwest half. Steve Lloyd down. That was high, though. That was high. And that was Kevin Dunn. Well, there's no argument about that one. Yes, because the player even uh, jumped up as he went in, so that was uh, dangerous indeed. It's a good kick. <laughs> John Arnold, three international caps already. He's been on the bench 29 times for England. Big throw in this. Johnson up, Lloyd in support, Lloyd down. Midlands appeal. Turned down. Well, first Johnson, then Steve Lloyd. He must have been mighty close, but the referee quite clearly a difficult decision to make with the uh, players piling in on top. <laughs> Dawson's obstructing as the Midlands go. And the Midlands still in control. It's at the feet of Richards, who's gone this time gets it this time they deserve that and the crowd love it too expression of contentment I think and uh, deserve reward for Dean Richards as the Midlands get the try you can see actually Dawson was obstructing there and uh, Hill was quite right in appealing but it mattered not because Richards was doing his own thing and the, so was the Midlands pack the ball control was there and Richards, well, how many times has he done this in his career? So, to get within a point, John Liley has this conversion. Almost half an hour played. It's close, it's curled just that little bit too much. Past the left hand upright. So, with half an hour gone, eight 
points to five, the South West lead. And a special cheer for this one as Richard scored one of the local heroes. Johnson, good cash at the front. Looking for the gap and getting there. Nice running. Support via, uh, via back. Packman the link. Angel. It's a well angled ball. It's just, in fact, carried too far. John Oliver in the wars. Be a local man. Richard Cockrell to take his place. Leicester player. So sympathetic applause for Oliver. Injury time being played. Stabbing kick by uh, Barnes, effective indeed, deep into the 22. In the uh, short line, it's Cockrell. Clearance kick not in touch. Packman's following up there to help. And as they uh, fall out of play, the half time whistle goes. Pretty lively stuff. And I guess just about uh, on as even with the South West, though, a three point advantage. 8 5 they lead. Wouldn't mind joining them. What a festive party they've got going in the stand. South West, though in a less than festive mood. They won't be wanting to give anything away at the moment. Particularly points, they lead by three. Nine, seven, two. On the South West side, Kevin Nine, Dunn. Gloucester, England B. Former Gloucester, should I say. Actually, uh, what's player now? Clark at the back. Runs out of the hands of Chris Clark. Knock on given. Big Ben, 24 year old, 6 foot 5, and won his first cap against South Africa. Back with Shillingford in support. Good setup by the Midlands. Angel, Dean Richards, Dawson, nice switch again. Thornycroft's drive up to the 22. There for Dawson once more. This is a good continuity by the Midlands. Neil back. Inside the 22 now. And again, it's with the scrum half. To Angel. To the back row. Bates. The drive by Loy. Just short of the post. On the roll is Lynette. No more than two metres out from the southwest line. And a penalty it is. With the southwest piling in and the players lying over the ball after the tackle, southwest penalised and a disconsolate Andy Robinson slopes back behind the goal line to face the kick of John Liley. Secure. Although John Liley's uh, kicking form has been a little bit erratic in this championship, no doubt for that one. And with just three minutes played of the second half, it's eight apiece. And a bit of sparring at uh, half back. Hoisted by Hill, Liley covers. Eludes the hands of Simon Morris, puts in the long kick. Callard is back there. Guskett's wide out in support if needed. Again from Callard, Lloyd waits. Advantage played for the knock-on. Hill. Packman, the only man in defence. Calls for the mark, doesn't get it. Dawson's with him. Has the look of a Nigel Melville about him, does Dawson. This is Callard on the counter once again. Held by Richards. Slips it to Crompton. Now they're rolling it off. Redmond and Hall together. Offside. 
the penalty in fact has been given against the Midlands for the follow-up to the tackle being with a player on the ground crowd expecting I think that uh, would have been an offside decision against the southwest not for them taking over the kicking from uh, Stuart Barnes who had only the one early success with the penalty then uh, the three kicks a goal since then so Callard it is straight and true so with six and a half minutes played in the second half 11-8 Southwest go back ahead that's Southwest 22 and enveloped the southwest with a bit of momentum up front Barnes sees a half chance of the break dangerous Packman intercepts took it beautifully lovely reverse past the back and here's Potter Potter just short over the line he is now won't want to see this replay too much his attempted ambition beautifully taken by Pacman then the uh, subtlety and deft touch of the reverse pass and then the strong run of the home club man now Potter took this well so back ahead come the Midlands this for a four point lead what it is after 12 minutes of the second half well there was a bad mistake of course by Barnes but there's a lot of positive skill in it not least the strong run here at the end which uh, brought the glory for Potter minutes to go in the southwest still pitching for victory never having won the ADT divisional championship they now find their four points adrift still but they pressure Barnes to Glanville mopped up by Potter midfield on the 22 it's there again for Hill could be something on here Barnes Guskett Clark took it well, still going, one tackle beaten inside, following up is Blackmore, and it counts. Well, well. Perhaps stealing victory at the last with Andy Blackmore on the end of a real speculative pass, and you can't blame Clark for doing this. Just the hope that someone might pick it up as he was held, and who should follow through than the big second row from Bristol to restore the lead to the southwest with just over five minutes to go well it was a well worked move swift passes by Barnes and Guskett then Clark beats the first tackle manages to get away despite the attentions of Potter and his gamble rewarded conversion well struck. Well, back after so many uh, injury troubles of the past, Callard will remember a very successful day, especially if the score stays as it is now for the Southwest. 18 points to 15. So all credit to Stuart Barnes and uh, Andy Robinson too for keeping the Southwest on the boil as they conceded their lead and then won it back with the divisional title now within their grasp four minutes to go 
and the referee uh, quite right despite the the crowd's observations because the dummy is allowed from a ruck on the ball it's only the set scrum where you may not dummy the ball Midlands put in the last minute to go will they go for the pushover brute strength and some technique required here penalty as the scrummage went down successful kick at goal would be 18 points all one has to question the decision knowing that uh, if the match is drawn the southwest are still divisional champions but clearly the midlands had little hope of uh, doing other than uh, conceding the title to the mid to the uh, southwest but of course with the try they could have won this particular match so this to draw the tie but the southwest would still be champions it's a kick by Lyle that goes straight through the post superbly struck with a minute of injury time gone honor for the midlands they share the match with the southwest with an 18 point all draw with the last kick of the game but by virtue of the fact that the southwest division have two wins and a draw for the first time ever they win the ADT divisional title. The South West and their captain, Stuart Barnes. Daly Serpentine, president of the Rugby Football Union, accompanied by David Hammond, deputy chairman of ADT. Stuart Barnes and a well-deserved achievement for the outstanding divisional side of the year. Well, the determination of the South West has been something that uh, uh, it's been lacking in the past, but this year we, we really turned it on when we needed to be. And the defence uh, forwards played magnificent, uh, especially when the Midlands were rolling more in and pushing us back. Uh, we, we came up trumps when we needed to. Well, when you score a try, we always ask you to relive it. Can you remember yours? It was a good one. Um, I, I'm not sure, actually, to tell you the <laughs> truth. I think uh, I just had the pleasurable task of falling over the line. I think uh, Jerry and Barnsley made a little bit of work and uh, Barnsley managed to get in a pass and, and just had the pleasurable task of flopping over. You had to be there to get it though, I thought you anticipated well and obviously Barnsley uh, well, got it away in the tackle and uh, still a bit of way to go. Yeah, well, well Barnsley did well, <laughs> that's all I'll say. I think the Midlands can be well pleased with their performance today. Um, I think, you know, it was a toss of the coin at the end on which side would win. Um, luckily they got a lucky break and went over for the try at, the, at their death. Well, it's a real honour in the draw in the final match. Uh, for you, though, a week of disappointment, I'm sure, because not many people are told uh, you know, that being five foot ten is too short to play international rugby, which I suppose what it amounts to, at least for the time being. Yeah, it, of course it's a big disappointment when sort of trained um, for the opportunity to get into the national side and then telling that you're a, an outstanding player but not big enough. I find it hard to see how the, the, the two phrases go in the same sentence. Well, some people won't recall, but of course... Uh, Quite a lot of people know Basil Egg, Newport. <laughs> what about you, England and Wales, then? Uh, uh, you're rather like Stuart Barnes, aren't you? Same pedigree. Well, yeah, I suppose we've got dual qualifications. I'm more Welsh than Barnsley, though, I should say. He, he, he's adamant that he's English through and through.